How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host Jesse Morgan and today we have a pretty sweet unboxing to do or unpackaging. It's not really a box but we're just going to say unboxing for uh, convenience sake. Uh, and it is a package from uh, Lord Dagor aka uh, Mr. Desi Wood um, from Deathbridge Records. He sent me a, a nice care package here with some of his record stuff and or record label stuff and some of his bands and projects um and as well as a kind of neat little bonus split item and yeah so thanks for sending me that des awesome stuff um i sent him a, a drakir kind of care package uh earlier this year and uh i think i sent him a shirt and a cd and something else so hopefully that made it to him okay i think it did actually i'm pretty sure i got the confirmation message that he did get it and that he's uh wearing the drakir shirt with pride and whatever so cool man glad you enjoyed the stuff and uh i definitely did enjoy this but uh, let's let's unbox this and see what we got from mr dagor lord dagor can't forget the Lord there. You gotta, you gotta self-aggrandize yourself in black metal, because, because everyone else are peasants, because that's how it is. So, uh, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna show off first. Um, no, no, okay. Actually, I'm gonna show this off first, uh, because I already have a copy of the original version. So, what this is, this is the reissue of Scroth with Skies Over Westeros. Um, I did a review of this album uh, a year back or so. I will put a link in the description box below. Hopefully I fucking remember to do that of my review of it. So if you want to hear more about what I have to say about it, go check it out there. Uh, this is a slim kind of promo digipack style re-release re of it on Deathbridge Records. Um, I got copy 80 out of 200. Um... I guess I could take it out and kind of show you what the disc looks like. Um, it's not anything super duper significant, but it's it's a little bit more than just kind of a, a stick-on kind of uh, um, paper. Uh, what do you recall? Those, those stickers that go on top of CDRs. But yeah, it's actually got Lord Dagor there, kind of kneeling in the snow with his sword in it and claiming his arctic territory there <laughs> love the love the grim ass corpse paint that's not going to come into focus because this thing's a piece of shit but uh there we go sort of but yeah cool that's what it looks like uh the only thing that i kind of had an issue with is if you can see that there there is some like glue residue from the inside of the 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 digipack and it kind of happened with all of them there's a little bit of glue residue in like little spots here and there M luckily most of it didn't end up on the readable part of the disc it just kind of ended up on the like the edge but uh yeah on every one of these there's a little bit of that glue residue unfortunately which sometimes can't be helped because when you do diy stuff you got to you know, save a few bucks here and there. I don't know how much these cost to get made, but uh, sometimes you just gotta go with the cheapest available option. Um, and when you do that, sometimes there's little defects and whatnot. But honestly, I still was able to rip these to my, my laptop and put them on my phone and, and all that stuff. They still transferred fine. So luckily, like I said, the little residue from the glue didn't transfer to the the like music part for the most part so i was able to rub it off for the you know for the most part um but yeah so that's the reissue uh now my copy of the original one it was on cd right here this is the original one here with a slightly different cover looks more uh naturey looks a little less grim there we go. Uh, but yeah, so go go check out the the review I did if you want to hear more about it. Uh, really good stuff from Desi on Deathbridge Records. Uh, kind of the like Game of Thrones themed black metal. All right, so that's that. Uh, now the next thing 
Uh, he kind of gave me a little bit of a backstory on this, but this is the first, I think, physical copy of Commit Suicides, How uh, No Harmony Left in Life. Wait. Wrong one! I'm an idiot. There we go. This is No Harmony Left in Life. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, so there's that. Now, uh, this was originally released back in 2008 uh, on a digital format. Uh, this obviously is the, the 2018 physical copy. And what Desi kind of told me about this was that when he was first starting to record anything and first starting to compose any music and, like, put it on a... Uh, on any sort of recorded device this this was kind of made with the most DIY kind of lo-fi way possible he said that some of it was even recorded using a webcam <laughs> or, 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 or over half of it maybe was used to recorded by a webcam somehow and I can't wrap my brain how, how he actually managed to do that and pull off what he got on here but uh, it's it's still pretty good. It says all the tracks were recorded between 2007 and 2010. This is a double disc, by the way. There's disc one and disc two. Um, they keep sliding into each other. But uh, here we go. This is disc one right here. Desi on the front there with the pure depressive black funeral doom metal. <laughs> <laughs> on the shirt. That's kind of neat. Uh, let's see what disc two is. It's probably the other dude who was uh, Serpent Draconis. He was on um, a few tracks there. Drums, vocals. He did some photography apparently. Uh, but there's that one. There's that disc. Pretty neat. Very cool shirt. Kind of reminds me a bit of Dead, if he had like that makeup on, just because how Dead likes to have his hair in front of his face. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of neat. Uh, they do kind of have a rundown of a couple of their 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 logos on here of what Commit Suicide has had over the years, uh, logo-wise. And it's... Get in there, you bastard. Really? You're going to fight me? Come on. Okay. So, anyways, there we go. Kind of shows you a couple of their logos that they used over the years. That's the one I'm most used to because of the High Wraith album. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of neat. Kind of gives you who does what. And I got copy 93 out of 100. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but there we go. Not bad. But uh, yeah, so this was kind of neat. This, this uh, copy of uh commit suicide the the no harmony left in life this would be more for fans of like stryborg and black Salise and maybe the burzum era or prison era burzum because there's a lot of like ambient stuff there's a lot of like noisy stuff that probably came with recording with a webcam uh the vocals are kind of hard to hear uh i for almost at some points didn't even notice there was vocals and it kind of sounded like 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 noisy crackling at times but I'm, and then on further inspection i'm like no those are vocals <laughs> so it kind of reminded me of black Salise in that manner so yeah if you want some really raw very very intimate diy kind of bare bones kind of like indie black metal kind of stuff definitely check this out it's kind of a like an ambient noisy dsbm very forlorn very depressing i mean for a band like it's called commit suicide and for an album that's called no harmony left in life you, you kind of get the feeling of what's going on here and and even though this is is lo-fi and as bare bones as you can get and, and just very interesting on how it's recorded I, I still can't get over it. that's kind of neat uh it it does hold a very kind of special place with me it, it does like just I don't know. It shows me that Desi had the 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 motivation and the I don't give a fuck kind of mentality uh, enough to just go and record something. He's like, I don't give a fuck. 
I'm just going to go press play on whatever I have available. I'm going to record some stuff. I'm going to release it. And if anyone doesn't like it, they can go fuck themselves. I put time and effort into this, despite however uh, quality it may sound. And I'm just going to record and do it because I'm an artist and I'm going to put my stuff out there and I'm going to do it any means possible. And that, that kind of mentality is awesome. I respect the hell out of it. Good on you, Desi. This might not be the most, like technologically impressive fucking release but man you can tell that he he really wanted to release something and he put a lot of his heart and soul into it and this was just kind of the beginning of what commit suicide would be so i am i am honored to have this i'm happy to have it i don't care about the production level i don't care how it was recorded the fact that it, some of it was recorded with a webcam just makes it even more hilarious and awesome so cheers definitely check out uh no harmony left in life by commit suicide thank you desi for giving me this freaking wicked <laughs> all right now on to something a little bit more advanced uh I, I i would say this next one how it hurts to smile is the kind of next evolution in what commit suicide would be he, I guess, found a better, obviously found a better way to record, a little bit more efficient, a little bit more uh, technologically advanced. Uh, maybe not a lot. I'm not exactly sure how this one was recorded, but you can definitely hear the production quality difference from between this and No Harmony Left in Life. Uh, now, How It Hurts to Smile was originally released in 2014 on uh, digital, so through Bandcamp and stuff like that. Um, I've been bugging and Desi for a while. I'm sure a lot of people have uh, for a physical copy release of this. I'm going to take this out. Um, and finally, in 2018, we got a physical copy of How It Hurts to Smile. And I couldn't be any more impressed with it. Um, now, it it being a digipack, whatever, at least you finally get a copy of this that you can hold and touch and admire and put on your shelf. Um, I got copy 29 out of 100, so that's that's a nice low number. I really appreciate that, Des. Um, and once again, it's got the members in question on on the inside here. It has the progression of the logos on the bottom there. Desi and Draconis. Yep, Serpent Draconis. Um, I think Serpent Draconis might have ended up being Priest from Ovenokian. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments section below. I probably am, but I feel like he might be connected to that project. I'm just not 100% sure, and I didn't research that part, but I feel like he might be. So let me know before, or let me know in the comments section before I uh, I actually find that out. Maybe you'll know probably right away, whoever's watching this. Uh, there's Desi again, looking like <laughs> he was dealt the biggest shit sandwich in life, uh, sitting up against a tree, wondering why he was ever birthed. So, very, very suited for the Commit Suicide album cover. Uh, I feel you, bro. Sometimes I'm just like, man, why was I even born? We're, we're kept alive to suffer, right, bro? <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, cool stuff. Uh, the other dude in in a graveyard looking at a gravestone, wondering when his ch chance to pass on will finally be and uh, rid himself of this mortal coil. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, jokes aside, this is a great step up for uh, Commit Suicide. Definitely led into the High Wraith album following this uh there's even some bonus content there i think yeah there's a high rate demo version on here and yeah there, that's another thing that's cool with these reissues there's there's so much bonus content there's rehearsal uh uh tracks there's demo tracks there's alternate covers there there are alternate versions there's there's a cover of the beatles here called and i love her and it's actually pretty good it's it's like it's a black metal version a de like a, a depressive suicidal black metal version of that track so that was neat um but yeah so definitely check this up definitely check it out uh definitely an upgrade from from um the harmony left in life 
but it it still pays respects a bit to his beginnings. You can definitely see the evolution and progress that he's made, uh, and just so happy to have a copy of How It Hurts to Smile after waiting what seems like years to finally get one. Uh, definitely a classic, legendary uh, piece of Death Bridge Records right here. Go check out How It Hurts to Smile. I have all the links in the description box below, so you'd better be going and checking those things out. Um, now the thing that came after that in their discography like I was talking about was this High Wraith. Um, I do have a review on my channel, so if you want to hear more about the High Wraith album by Commit Suicide, go look that up. Uh, I have a lot more to say about it, and you will be able to hear a little bit more in depth of what's going on with this album and all the instruments and stuff like that. Uh, just a two song album, but like very, very long tracks. Uh, and just really interesting to see how it's progressed since uh, How It Hurts to Smile and No Harmony Left in Life. Um, but the last thing that came in this unboxing is not black metal. It is the latest kind of release by his project Necrophilia, uh, but it also has three other artists on it. This is Girls, Guts, and Ganja, the, the latest split by these bands. Uh, that came out, I believe, 2018 as well. Pretty sure. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, let's get into this. I'll take it out, give you a, a, a better look at the, the... The fucking hell, get out of there. The, the case and everything. There we go. <laughs> now, if you know me, I'm not a fan uh, of the... Uh, the, the art, the artwork, but the the musicianship on here is well worth it. That's for damn sure. Um, the the CD is basically the same as the the front cover there. It's a little slightly different el uh, color, but uh, now let's talk about the artists on here. Gore pot, the gore pot side. Um, the, the tracks were like really, really heavy, very low tuned. The the slams in this were, were huge. And as usual, Gorepot provides some really, really interesting sound clips. So yeah, uh, the last time I heard Gorepot, I think was, uh, oh geez, what was the last thing that I heard by Gorepot? It was, holy fuck, am I even gonna get this out? It was this, the uh, the All You Can Smoke album. So it, I've missed a few albums in between, I think. But uh, the stuff on here is probably the best stuff I've heard from them in a while since uh, the, the album that came before that, which was Fermenting the Chiba Seeds. So yeah, uh, if you want some really, really good gore pot, this has an excellent uh, five songs on here by them so yeah definitely make sure you pick it up for that if you're into gore pot now as for the necrophilia stuff uh he's definitely progressed in his production value uh he has the same kind of gangster rap influenced uh clips and stuff the the slams are insane uh there's uh basically a guest appearance for every single uh track um the, the guy from rotten vomit a dude from Chainsaw Harakiri, uh, Daz from Slamophiliac, Joey Cashman from Goremonger, uh, one of the dudes from Dehumanizing Ida Train Warship, and Festus of Rape Face Roy. So that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, lo lots of really good stuff. The the slams in here once again are fantastic. And the last like the last clip or the clip for the last song. Necrophilia is best when you're still <laughs> when you're still fresh is is so funny. There's basically this guy talking about how uh, this the comedians this comedian that he knows is kind of dried up and his jokes aren't working, and he goes into talking about how he doesn't really see what the big deal is about fucking a dead corpse, and it's just it's really funny just what he says. It's, it's a little tongue in cheek, but it's also really funny if that's your sense of humor. So yeah, uh, excellent new stuff. Uh, six, six new tracks from Necrophilia. So stoked to have that in here. So thanks, Des. 
Um, but we're not done. Uh, we still got bong rips for Jesus and syphilic diarrhea. Uh, the bong rips, the bong rips for Jesus side, uh, has got some samples, some crazy vocals. It has a bit of a deathcore feel to it. There's some dissonant riffs and some techie stuff. There's some bass drops and there's some down tempo stuff. So you get a, a bit of mixture of like a, a lot of different brutal elements, a lot of heavy elements. Uh, there's even some slams in there, but yeah, I, I feel that they're more like brutal death metal slash deathcore feel more than just slam, uh, but really good. Um, no, no complaints there music wise. Um, and then syphilic diarrhea I only had two tracks on here, but from what I heard, it had a very gore grind feel. There's obviously some samples and it leans toward more brutal death metal and gore grind. And just had that very like distinct, like undecipherable toilet gurgly vocals so yeah honestly everything on this split was amazing i've been out of touch with the slam world for a bit uh, I, I have a lot of catching up to do when i finally get back into slam again uh but man th this is this would be a great start if i was getting back into it like hardcore um I'm probably not going to be into it for a bit because I've got a lot more thrash and black metal to catch up on. But man, this is an excellent addition to my collection. Every band goes fucking hard on here. The new necrophilia is just exceptionally good to me. Uh, but And man, Gorepod brings the fucking like, huge deep slam. So yeah, uh, A plus split, fucking A. So yeah, uh, description box will be filled with links. Go spend some time in there and go check every one of these things out thank you so much to desi lord dagor wood for this amazing package i know i'm going to be listening to this for the next you know few weeks straight for sure uh some amazing stuff some amazing slams some amazing like ambient depressive black metal and just some killer stuff so cheers man hope you're enjoying the drakir stuff Thanks for rocking that shirt, and uh, till next time, for glory, for the rebellion, Slammer out.